So this experiment that we're doing today is the effect of concentration, surface area and um, temperature on rate of reaction. So it's investigating factors that affect rates of reaction. So what we need is um, different concentrations of hydrochloric. So we have 0.5 molar, 1 molar and 2 molar hydrochloric. We have different sizes of um, surface area. So we have small marble chips. We have some large marble chips and we have powdered um, calcium carbonate, which is marble chips. Um, and we're also going to do um, different temperatures. So we're going to do a water bath that's hot water and a water bath that's cold in terms of an ice bath to be able to raise the temperature to 40 degrees and lower the temperature to 10 degrees. And we'll also have room temperature, which at the moment is about 20 degrees. So the first one we're going to do is our... Um, is our large chips, so we're going to investigate surface area. So we'll need our chips, so we'll have those to the side. We're going to do the large chips. We have different size conical flasks. Now the um, method actually says to use 100ml um, conical flasks. This is not necessarily going to be suitable for your large calcium carbonate, because if you look at the size of the calcium carbonate, making sure that they can go into the mouth and come out again is quite important so you're probably better off going to a larger size just for the large one and then changing to your smaller size of the conical flask for your smaller ones. So the, the method says that what we're going to do is place um, 20 mils of the 2 molar and we're using 2 molar so that the acid stays constant and we're just using different size calcium carbonate. So you're going to pour your 20 mils, which you've measured in your 20 mil measuring cylinder, into the large conical flask. Step to the side. And then you're going to place that on your balance. Once we've got that on the balance, to ensure that we're only measuring the calcium carbonate, we're going to tear at this point. So you'll bring that back to zero. And this balance takes measurements to two decimal places, so the uncertainty will be the smallest decimal place, so it'll be 0 .00, sorry, 0.01 grams in terms of our uncertainty. So we're going to place our weigh boat on the scale as well, and we're going to measure 20 grams of the calcium carbonate, because these are large pieces, I'm just going to pick them out. So I want to try and get pieces that I know will fit in and that will give me about 20 grams because we do want it as close to 20 grams as we can so that it's a fair test. Ooh. So we have 20 grams with the weigh boat. Notice it is with the weigh boat so the actual measurement will be slightly less. So you can think about how you could improve that in the future to make it actually be 20 grams. So once you've got that um, ready, um, notice that your weigh boat is bendable, which means it can then easily become a pouring instrument. So don't just try and tip from this because then powder or chips can go from either side. We do want to make sure that we're controlling it. If you want to have two people or if, with, um, if you do have just the one, you want to make sure that you've got your timer starting as you actually put it in. So I'm going to, as soon as I um, have this actually entering, I'm going to start my timer. As quickly as we can, start. So you'll notice that if you did have an error, that you want to note that that was actually what happened. So not all of it went in at the same time. So there was a slight difference. The other thing we need to do is actually make sure that this is still on the balance, because otherwise, we haven't got our initial mass. So every 15 seconds, we're going to then record our mass change. So we started at 20, it's now 15 seconds, so it's gone down to 19.89. You need to also think about, while you're actually taking your measurements, how uncertain you are in terms of your accuracy of um, the 15 seconds. So if you think you're about half a second out, then put that you think it's plus or minus half a second. If you think it's longer than that, then put how much you actually are estimating it actually is in terms of your uncertainty. 
So you're going to let this reaction go for um, five minutes, recording every 15 seconds for the first three minutes and then every 30 seconds for the last two minutes. If it is still decreasing in mass, then you need to think about continuing with it until you see no decrease in mass and you've got a stable mass occurring. So you can see the reaction is occurring for the appearance of the bubbles. Um, you can slightly swirl in between. Um, with your large um, marble chips, it is quite important to make sure that you have actually got them so that they're covered. So you, as you notice here, as you swirl it around, some of the surface is becoming unexposed. So trying to get it so that they are flat, so that they are as exposed, all the surface area is exposed as much as possible, to try and make it a fairer test. Okay, so this is uh, the large chips. I'll show you how to wash those shortly. But at the moment I just want to do, so I've got the same 20 mils going into the small flask and we're going to do the powder. So again we place this on and we tear, because this way we don't get any differences in terms of the type of conical flask. There is still slight variation between conical flasks and their mass, so we're trying to minimise as much variation as possible. And we're going to weigh the 20 grams. So it ends up being just under 18 grams. We're going to take it to the 20 gram mark, the same as we did before, with the powder. And noticing that um, our limiting reagent in this experiment is actually our hydrochloric acid. Our calcium carbonate is in excess. So we've just gone over the 20 grams, so just reduce it down. With the powder, one thing you do need to be careful with is that it does mix well. So this will be a little bit um, more difficult and you will need to be careful because the powder can go everywhere. You might like to think about ways you could improve actually getting it into the flask to make sure all of it occurs. And we've got reactions occurring already. So I'm going to start. see it clumping at the bottom and we want to try and avoid that so once we've got everything in you can see that this is a slower process which means that there is some inaccuracy in your timing here you might want to think about how you can actually improve that so notice I'm mixing and at this point I'm at the 40 second mark, so I'm going to wait till 45. And that's where I would take my reading. So at this point, because I didn't get everything in at once, it means that there is that inaccuracy at the beginning in terms of that initial rate. So something you need to think about is how you could actually improve that, what you could do to change the method to make this more accurate in terms of that initial start time. Do you want to try and just give this a swirl every now and again? Because you don't want just a clump there because that's not going to give you a true indication of the fact that you've got a smaller surface area. So you can see a much more vigorous reaction in this case. And to the point that it's actually stabilised almost straight away. Even swirling, I'm not getting an in, a, a in decrease in my mass, so the reaction has completed. Okay, so this is the, the powdered. When you're actually um, getting rid of your acid, we do want to be able to retain these chips. So one of the things that you're going to do is you're going to decant the reactants to all the liquid. You'll then wash with just normal water. These decant again. Then you're going to tip out um, the chips onto paper towel, pat them dry, and they can either be reused um, as soon as they are dry. You can have a couple of ones drying while you're continuing, or they can be dried later and recovered for further use in further labs. Please make sure that your calcium carbonate chips do not go down the sink. We do not want blockages in our sinks, and we do need to make sure that 
um, we have safe procedures. So this is one of our safety concerns. In terms of measuring or increasing your temperature, so this is our surface area. Concentration, you're doing exactly the same with the small marble chips and you just change the different concentrations. So you've already done the two molar, so you're only going to have to investigate the one molar and the 0.5 molar. With the change in temperature, you've already done the room temperature with the two molar. We're using two molar concentration and the small chips. This time we're going to just change the temperature. So I've had um, this hydrochloric acid sitting in the hot water bath. Um, it's currently above the temperature I want. It's on about 76, so I need to let that out of the water bath, let it cool for a little bit. In the cold water, the ice bath, I'll just let that drop. So you're going to use hot water rather than a hot plate because we don't want a situation where we might um, let it boil. So if it's just in a hot bath, it's not going to get to that temperature. In the cold bath, or it can be left in the fridge overnight, we want it get to get down to about 10 degrees and you want to record that temperature. So once this is cooled to 40 degrees or just warmed, because I've left that in for a bit long, uh, that's when you'll actually then put that on and do your experiment exactly the same as you've done before for the small chips.